AMD shares fallen after the company issued weaker guidance than the street wanted. Results for the fourth quarter, though, were in line with expectations. These don't tell the story. This is an amazing story. I am so glad the CEO, Lisa Sue, joins us now because, Lisa, you used a number last night. It's freaking everybody out. You said, oh, by the way, hello. Right. But I'm good sorry. Morning, you think I have time for that hello you. nonsense. Hello to Dan, too. It's Daniel, you. Okay, all great. The, you used a number called a $400 billion total addressable market for accelerated computing, your kind of a computing, in 2027? Now, Lisa, that presumes that there's going to be an industrial revolution that will be bigger than, than Microsoft, uh, than Wintel, bigger than the iPhone, bigger than the Loom. How is that possible? Well, first of all, it's great to be here with you, Jim. Nice to see you guys and, and Carl as well. Look, um, I think we are in an amazing time. I'm so excited to be in this space. You know, high-performance computing is driving everything that we do. And AI in particular, Jim, the $400 billion TAM in 2027 is about changing the way we do everything. So think about, you know, what AI is. It's a once in, I would say it's the most important technology that has come over the last 50 years. It's an opportunity for us to change um, everything that we do, how we live, how we do business, how we do research, how productive we are, how we ensure that, you know, we have the best capabilities. And really, you know, every single person's life is going to be touched by AI. So yeah, I feel like this is a huge market opportunity. And we've spent the last few years positioning AMD as an AI company, and we've made significant progress in that, um, you know, here in the fourth quarter, as well as coming into 2024. So um, I'm really excited about our AI opportunity. Okay, I think one of the problems, Lisa, maybe why there was some pushback, is other than, say, in the Microsoft call, which we have a fabulous relationship, by the way, congratulations, they like the MI300, your chip. Uh, what what bothers me is is that, look, there's uh, Amy inside, Amy Hood and, and Sasha Nadella, talking about how, well, we use it for summations. I think a lot of us are concerned. In our daily lives, we don't know how it's going to change us. Uh, and uh, So how will it? You know, I think it's still um, quite new. If you think about, um, you know, some of the applications that are out there, first of all, you know, uh, for AI to work, we really have to, you know, train these large models. These, these models get much better um, over time. I think everyone has seen what ChatGPT can do. Uh, the fact that you can, you know, get so much information in such a short amount of time. Now imagine incorporating that into every aspect of how you run a business, every aspect of how, um, you know, you make decisions um, in businesses, um, how you do research and make that more efficient, how you get better health care, and the fact that it'll make your doctors more, uh, more capable and more efficient. It'll make all of those processes easier. We're just at the very beginning. And the work that we're doing is we're really building, let's call it um, the foundation, sort of the processing and the compute capability that will enable us to train these models. And then also when you ask ChatGPT a question, it needs to have very powerful computers so that it can answer you as fast, as, as effectively as possible. So that's what we're doing. And I would okay. say we're at the very, very early innings of right, well, this there, um, compute there, revolution. I'm sorry. The reason I start with the $400 billion total just market is there is a sense that there's only going to be one winner. There's going to be NVIDIA, and they'll have the H200, which is going to be faster. It's easily, it trains better, and you've got an older system by that point. Uh, if it's $400 billion, and if there's a lot of companies that are embracing yours, then what I think to say is, is that there is so, so much room for everybody to make a lot of money. Am I being too bullish, and is it really zero sum, and I'm missing the point? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, if you think about just how much progress has been made just over the last 18 months in the industry around AI, and then with AMD, you know, we ramped, we launched our MI300 uh, here just in December, and, you know, we said we were going to do over $400 million of revenue. We exceeded that. We said we were going to do $2 billion of revenue in 2024, and we've now updated that to over $3.5 billion in revenue. Uh, we have dozens of customers who are, um, you know, really using MI300 in their, um, in their data centers and really, you know, getting um, a lot of capabilities out of that. So this is the very beginning, and I completely agree with your point. With such a large market, you're going to need a lot of different solutions, and we love the partnerships that we have. These are partnerships that, as, um, as you know, we've built great partnerships with our server product, Epic, uh, through the Italian cities, and now we're adding um, our Instinct and our MI300 portfolio. Hey, Lisa, there's a lot of work being done right now trying to figure out whether or not uh, the AI 
push is already making itself seen in productivity or a wave of layoffs. Others argue it's really right now at least more about supply chain healing and being at full employment. When you see stuff like that, what is your take? You know, my take is uh, we are definitely seeing the stages where AI is making uh, us more productive. We're using AI, you know, throughout uh, the work that we're doing, um, even internally at AMD, when we think about how we design chips, um, how we market better, um, how we, you know, have better processes. Um, I think a lot of enterprises are starting to figure out how they use it, and it will definitely make us more productive going forward. I don't see it as, you know, layoffs per se. I see it as making knowledge workers just that much more productive, and, you know, that can only be good for our overall economy and, and how we, you know, get more efficient and effective. All right, so Lisa, well, I do want to deal with some of the, what I regard as transitory issues. Uh, there's some slowdown in some of the Xilinx business. When I went back and looked at the fourth quarter of 221 uh, from Xilinx when it was independent, it was this, actually the same amount of revenue as now, which I found disappointing. And then also uh, the significant weakness in gaming. Is that a uh, transitional or is that something that is a secular decline that I should be worried about? Yeah, no, thanks for that, Jim. I think it's important for people to understand, you know, the semiconductor industry uh, has gone through, you know, just a lot of lift. I mean, think about the pandemic-driven demand. Uh, we were building for a very, very significant demand. We saw significant growth. And what happens in those periods is um, you also get a situation where, you know, customers have uh, perhaps purchased um, a bit more than they need in the short term. And so there's a little bit of, a, you know, customers normalizing their inventory. There is, um, you know, nothing that is uh, fundamental about this. Frankly, I'm very excited about the Xilinx business. We've made tremendous progress in design wins across the board. People love our portfolio, the fact that we're taking sort of, you know, the leadership FPGAs of the Xilinx business together with the embedded processing um, from our, um, you know, um, AMD, um, you know, processing capability. Uh, we saw actually design wins last year grow by over 25 percent, and so over $10 billion of new design wins. We're absolutely gaining share in the market. And yes, this is a transitory, let's call it first half of the year. Uh, we expect a bit more, you know, sort of, a, you know, correction from a, a customer inventory standpoint. And then we'll return to growth in the second half. Lisa, how about an update on hiring, retention, comp, whether or not there's a sufficient labor pool uh, to continue to grow this part of the business? Yeah, we're absolutely focused on continuing to grow um, overall. We're investing in R&D. You know, the work that we do uh, really extends over uh, sort of the decisions that we make today are, are really, you know, roadmap for the next three to five years. Um, I think there's a good pool, you know, especially for AI talent. It is a very competitive market. Um, but, you know, we're doing very exciting things at AMD.